Hello, hello, and welcome to the Watch Reactions channel. If you like the video, please do consider liking and subscribing. So today we're going to be going deep down some digital watch rabbit holes, of which I've outlined 10 different avenues for you to pursue at your leisure. Now, first, of course, we have to dig into those iconic Casios. Uh, I'm sure you can see things on this elsewhere, but of course we have to cover the F91W, classic watch everyone owns. Interesting to try and look at the different colorways that have been available for this. This one, an orange of mine. I also enjoyed digging back into some printed strap versions of F15 and F78W from back in the day. This on screen now is my W59, a slightly different version. And then the F23W straight from the 80s in those cool colorways. And of course, the one that we all have to have, favorite of the mods, the Casio Royale. Second on my list, the other pillar of digital watches, iconic Timex. The Timex Triathlon has an eight-lap memory chronograph. It's for men and women of iron. Hmm? Which is brighter, the conventional watch light on the left or this Timex with the Indiglo nightlight on the right? The one on the right. The Timex Triathlon or the Ironman Triathlon will always be the OG for me. This is my version on screen. Again, a slightly better conditioned version that you can also see. A fact that a lot of folks don't know is that the Timex Data Link, which uh, has some interesting technology behind it, is actually validated to go into space. So an another interesting angle to the series. And again, it continues through to today. I ordered this one just yesterday. There's also the world of, of different variants. So there's this Black & Decker version from back in the day. There's a nice YouTube video on this and beams with their crazy pink reissues. Timex Atlantis 100, because two thirds of the earth is covered with water. That was, of course, the Atlantis 100 or the Expedition series. Another fun rabbit hole to go down. My current favorite angle is on some different recent reissues of this. So, this is a beams model in crazy colorways. You can see these white and green models, and of course, lots more to explore. So, another fun rabbit hole. Another icon in the Tatmix back catalogue, now released in all sorts of new different ways, is the T80 series with their classic display with the uh, Indiglo format. You'll see this in all sorts of different varieties, uh, multicolored, but also more recently the famous Timex Pac-Man collaboration famously slammed over on just one more watch, as well as some funky, I think this is the 80 series, this is another Beams tortoiseshell collaboration. No matter how long your shopping list, Timex is ready with over 200 fabulous styles. Like our marathon. Finally, on this surface level uh, view of the iconic Timex watches is, of course, the Q series digital variant for those that have seen the mechanical Q recently. Third rabbit hole that I'm priming you for your own entry into is some iconic Citizen digital watches. Um, some relatively uninspiring looking ones from back in the day. A, very similar to Casio. Um, some slight hints of them being a bit different within some of those visuals, but then you get onto the amazing Annie Digi Temp series, which is the one that for me uh, really pops out here, available in a few different variants over the years. But by far the coolest one I've seen is the collaboration that they've done with Star Wars. Obviously Citizen owns the rights for those. In preparation for this video, I was doing a bit of a digging around and what was available. Check out this crazy number. Uh, in blue in their windsurfing series and of course I've had a good scout around various Instagram accounts some fruits of which you can see on screen see for example here this rarer model of a Digiana series and um, you can see another one here from the Hitmix account which I definitely recommend you viewing on Instagram including some circular models which seem to be going for some crazy amounts uh, online the one you can see on screen now several hundreds of pounds of course they also had a foot in the game of the calculator series now you can do a whole video just on calculator watches here's a round uh, version which is not one i've seen so much and of course citizen was also playing uh, in some of these voice memo type watches as well so a really interesting battle catalog to explore of course seiko used to have a big foot in the game of digital watches so let's check out some of the things that they've done Obviously, they were originally some of the OGs in 1973, preparing some of the first LCD displays that replaced the LED technology that Hamilton had been putting through with Pulsar. 
They also did one of the first um, Seiko Quartz Chronograph uh, models uh, in digital, as you can see on their history, and the infamous uh, TV uh, model, which you always see referenced. Obviously, obviously, Casio played in this game as well. Voice memos, so you can see these very crazy looking watches. And of course, one of the original computer watches, which looks suitably old school here on this picture. Everyone always talks about the Casio Royale. Well, the most famous series here is actually the one you can see on screen, which was the original watch from Octopussy, I believe, recently refurbished under the Wired series. And of course, they've got some solar models. Um, again, some funny watches that you can see over on Instagram. I really like this world timer in kind of the yellow. It looks just so old school with that kind of yellowed screen. And of course, some of their sports models. So you can see the Sports 100, both in the rectangular format, but also in a circular format. Looking back into some of the old Argos catalogs, you can also see here some of these cool pulse versions as well as different shapes. And then I just looked into some weird and wonderful. So look at the crazy display on this one. The most crazy one I've seen is this drum machine model, which has a metronome and rhythms built in. The only more recent kind of Seikos I can see is like the one you can see on screen, the Seiko Spirit, and also this, I believe they call the E-Ink model. But I don't think that's necessarily because Seiko's fully, fully pulled away from the market. So as you'll see on screen, they do actually have Alba Pulsar, because obviously Pulsar was sold off from Hamilton and Wired. So Alba is actually under the Seiko family. So you can see some of their classic models uh, switching up on the screen now that uh, interested me on my travels. Again, in some pretty 70s, uh, looking colors there. Found some pretty mad ones as well. So look on screen now, you can see a Mario Brothers version of an old Alba model. Here's one of their more recent ones, I think just over in Japan in their Fusion series. Made famous in the Metal Gear Solid series was the Wired, uh, which is also owned by Seiko, which is, you can probably see a revisiting of that old uh, GoldenEye or James Bond watch that we could see before. And again, Pulsar still ticking away uh, in a few different places. They obviously own Loris as well, very present in Argos catalogs over the year, including their own version of what looks very similar to a 91W, which I like. Loris still going, producing watches to these days, sport versions. Look at this one, <laughs> intriguingly similar uh, to a G-Shock Square, one might say. Now, of course, we couldn't leave out Orient. Again, I'm not so familiar with this, so I was quite reliant on the Vintage Digital Watch YouTube channel, so thanks to him uh, for putting out such great content. They go all the way back in the day to both LED watches as well as the LCD watches, and the best way I could give you a bit of a flavour of some of their back catalogue was just a little capture you can see on screen now from the YouTube channel uh, Vintage Digital Watch. He's got a fantastic, relatively immaculate looking collection here. Really recommend going and watching this channel. In particular, it really drills down on those calculator watches. So definitely go and take a look at this channel uh, if you haven't already. He um, has videos across all sorts of different digital watches and was really good on the lead up to this. So yeah, go and check him out. Here's a few stills uh, that I also came across, largely digging around on the internet from some Orient watches. If you like this kind of vibe, uh, then it could be a nice little rabbit hole uh, for you to go down. Obviously, is isn't all just these kinds of models. We've also got these kind of square models with the large display, and they did have at least one uh, circular model, uh, which kind of going closer to those Casio sports type watches on screen now. So group number six represents those two other avenues that kind of piled into the digital watch market back in the day and continuing to, to a certain degree. Uh, as I understand, and I've ordered my own copy, this book, Electrifying the Wristwatch, is apparently a fantastic example of, of a history of this particular area. As I understand the story, Texas Instruments was kind of one of those major organizations that really came in and lowered the price over in the US by kind of mass producing these sorts. And then of course, everyone else, piled in. So for example, uh, an Argos catalog that's relevant here in the UK. I don't think we'll recognize any of these brand names. Now, here's another example, but of course it adds to the fun of collection and the history of this example. Sanyo, another electronics company, I think that made alarm clocks back in the day, as well as this national semiconductor watch. There really was everyone in the market. 
Um, again, another brand that maybe has a little bit more history to it, so it warrants a bit more explanation, was Rico. Again, watch this video from Vintage Digital Watches that kind of goes into this, really recommend it. Another avenue is international versions of this. So for example, Russia also had its own category of digital watches. And then you've kind of got more design orientated things such as Braun re-released uh, relatively recently uh, under their own steam in a different area and then there's all of the promotional tie-ins and mcdonald's and uh, other variants as well as film tie-ins which kind of ties both of these together and then we're on to fashion watches so nixon is one of the first examples of this which is actually really cool kind of came out the surf scene back in the day the rerun model you can see on screen they've also gone to develop some pretty hardcore uh, products such as the regular series which I believe is military grade and some fun watches as well such as the Dork or I believe this is the Dork 2 series. Again the Fossil Group have been in this game since back in the day also kind of commonly thought of as being uh, fashion watches and some examples on screen and more recently as well um, I think this was seen on Ben's affordable watch channel this Lacoste watch I actually quite like it it's not too bad of course it's kind of tarred with that brush of fashion watch Armani Exchange, surprisingly similar to Nixon uh, in its case, and the Hugo Boss also in the realm as well. So if you're minded to do so, it's something you can explore in more detail at your leisure. Now, of course, no uh, list would be complete without the LED watches, infamous in the 70s. Of course, it all started with the Hamilton Pulsar. If you ignore some of those mechanical, technically digital watches from back in the day, a really great article for this is over on Hodinkee that looks at this whole period of the original LED watches and how they took over from quartz and then LCDs came in and a history of all of that. Uh, of course, the Hamilton Pulsar had a few different iterations over time, including flipping it up towards you so you could see it and re-released uh, more recently. Of course, there were other brands that got in on a similar kind of vibe from back in the day. You can see some examples on screen now. Some funny ones, Hewlett Packard combining the LED watch with the calculator. And of course, Rolex got in on the game. I don't think this was ever for sale, but it's an example that's contained in the book I referenced before. Amiga, obviously, with their own LED watch. And the famous Belova, I think it's called the Computron, which was again re-released quite recently. I saw one in the shop the other day. And Yenna uh, recently re-releasing their own LED watch. Eight is a really fun rabbit hole, which is some of those more obscure and weird Casios from back in the day, as well as some under the radar options from more recent times. One example is the gaming watches from back in the day. This was when they were trying to differentiate as prices were coming down. Space Warrior, Heli Battle, uh, Surfer, Super Windsurfing, example on screen now, basketball watches. Uh, some really fun uh, collectibles if you choose to go down this rabbit hole. Of course, more straight ahead watches. I quite liked this one that I just saw the other day, which was a fishing related watch. Of course, all sorts of different watches I couldn't cover now. Jogging watches, watches for every sport you can imagine. This was a motorcycle watch. This is the, I think uh, Mad Watch Collector did one on this, the Surf Timer. How cool does that look? And one I just found uh, in looking for this video. This is a more recent skiing watch. Look at those multicolors on there. Looks really fun. There was some innovation in there too, so you might have seen my other video on this. This is the FS10, of which I actually own my own version, which was an ultra-thin technology, I believe still the thinnest watch uh, ever made. The one on screen, I think it's the NF11, I believe, a very weird asymmetric design. You can see, I believe, a walkie-talkie uh, style watch on screen. This is Infraceptor, which was another crazy kind of collaborative gameplay watch. This was one that had a thermometer built in so you could take your friend's temperatures. And the origins of the now uh, relatively common ProTrek module, look at some of the original designs. This is a really cool one for today that you can get your hands on. One of the series I don't see too many folks uh, speaking about outside of narrow circles is the Wave Scepter series, uh, which is very nice. Edifice, more famous for analog, but also some cool uh, uh, digital watches too. Now for the king of the castle, lots of fun to be had here, G-Shock. The Casio G-Shock has a super powerful shock absorber. That's why it withstands so much shock. Casio G-Shock. Now there's no shortage of histories on this topic, so go and watch Watch Geeks, a fantastic video on this if you're interested. 
Uh, Casio were obviously having a few pre-iterations of this model. You can see an example on screen. Actually, between that original G-Shock Square in kind of the 5000, which ultimately turned into the 5600 series, there was a circular version as well, which I didn't know uh, until recently. Uh, but obviously, that original Square, they tried to change over to this G-Shock 2 or 5500. Never quite happened, but that's a series you can get into. And then there's these weird and wonderful ones, which there's a very passionate uh, collector base for. There's kind of the Gundam series uh, that came out of this. Here's another example on screen now. I didn't even know about until I did this video uh, from back in the day from an old series. And you can also see some precursors uh, to the Frogman series here. One of the most uh, famous uh, models outside of the squares themselves is the 6900 series available in so many colorways wouldn't be able to even count. Uh, the coolest one of which I own is the uh, kind of Kith collaboration rainbow series with metal bezel and some really mad options out there like the Big Mac, uh, which you can get into collecting uh, as well. Some ones outside of the, the beaten track is uh, some examples you can see on screen now of mine. This is the GD350 with the Vibal arm. I really like, and of course, probably the deepest avenue that you'll get down in G-Shocks is G-Shock Square Limited Editions collecting, culminating in things such as the NASA model you saw recently. So now you probably understand the fuss. But the final category, what's some other modern additional watches outside of Casio and G-Shock land? This is, of course, the Timex Command series. Again, one of the more interesting colorways of a, a related uh, model on screen now. And I particularly like the Command Urban series, uh, which you can see on my wrist there. Braun is another angle you can go down, kind of higher end digital watches. And then you're into the world of GPS and smartwatches, such as Garmin, Tag Heuer Connected, which has come out more recently. There's increasingly some of these fashionable brands, such as Skagen, uh, that do some very nice, but quite costly variants and some emerging uh, Sunto watches as well. So that's my 10 primers or start of the rabbit hole for you guys. You can go and explore on your own. Of course, I've missed huge swathes uh, and ripe avenues, but that's half the fun. You can go in and look yourselves. Would obviously love some uh, questions or comments uh, in the comment section down below. Please do consider liking and subscribing and you can see me on Instagram at Watch Reactions. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and hopefully this triggers an interest for you in digital watches.